Namaste and uh, thank you, uh, Saina. So, so super excited, just absolutely, <laughs> literally counting the days uh, to to come out there, the stunning mountain views. Um, yeah, didn't get to do it when we first planned that second time around. Absolutely. Um, so I can't believe we're here again already. Uh, first Wednesday of the month and it's just been such a a full and rich month and I hope that it has been just as um, profound for you in terms of insights and epiphanies and breakthroughs. Uh, it seems that we all have our fair share of challenges as well along the pathway to truth and that's what makes this kind of community so extraordinarily valuable just to be with people that are heading in the same direction and value the same things. It's just so healing, isn't it? Because anywhere else we go in our daily lives, we we don't really get that. And uh, we might have people that we love and you know, of course, um friends with, but there's something really special about getting together like this and really um diving into perhaps the most important human subject of all. Uh, to us which is to um, wake up to the truth so I thought I would just uh, start by seeing if anyone has any questions or anything that you're struggling with or challenged with right now or any breakthroughs you've had or epiphanies I would love to hear what's uh, troubling you and um, what your insights and epiphanies are so if you do have anything you want to bring forward uh, just feel free to either raise your hand or just uh, speak up and we'll we'll go from there. We'll see see where this goes. Uh, Melanie, yeah. Well, I've been doing the zoom in and the zoom out, but mm -hmm. I think I think I heard you say that when you zoom in to the thermos, when I zoom into the thermos, I'm using my eyes. Yeah. But when I zoom in to the space or I zoom out into the space, I feel like I'm seeing space with my eyes around the thermos. And I think the point of that is that meditation is that one thinks they're zooming in with their senses but to zoom out, they're not using the senses, but I'm using my senses because I can see space around this thermos. So somehow I think maybe I'm not getting it. It's okay. It's very, very um, normal to have this kind of thing come up uh, first. So, so the thermos you can definitely see with your eyes. That's right. clear to us all. But can you actually notice something that's invisible with your eyes? Is there well, anything? I noticed around? that there's not there's nothing else jammed up next to it. There's nothing yeah. next to it. Is that the same as seeing it with your eyes? You're noticing that there's nothing tangible around the thermos. Nothing solid. You can put another object next to it, right? And so there's a recognition that what's around the thermos isn't solid, isn't tangible. Right. So, what oh, is no, it? I, think I see that. I see the space, but maybe you're saying I don't see the space with my eyes. I got not no. with your eyes, no, because can you, um, does it have any color or texture or anything at all that you could use your senses to recognize? The thermos is a good example. It has a shape and a size, a color. So you can pick it up in your hand. You know that it's tangible and solid. You know what color it is because your eyes are looking and seeing the vibrational frequency of the color. Uh, but does empty space around it have anything that your senses can pick up? If your senses are picking up vibration only and your eyes are, uh, eyes are meant to pick up vibration, it's your brain that tells you what colour the thermos is. So whether we realise it or not, and that's why this is so powerful, we're actually... Um, recognizing with some other faculty recognizing the empty space we're seeing it but not with our physical eyes we're seeing it in a different way but i feel like if i close my eyes i'm not seeing the thermos and i'm not seeing the space around it either 
Let's you see. close your eyes, then isn't there some inner space? There's inner, but it's black. It's not that space around the, the thermos. Do you know what I mean? It, yeah, yeah, absolutely. You're doing amazing here. So is that space black when you close your eyes, or is that blackness the absence of light? Does space actually have any color? Just take your time with this because it, what we're trying to do here is separate the attention from the senses so that we see they don't have to follow each other. And here's one of the common things that people get confused with it over and over again. It was the same for me. So it's really good to slow down and just check how am I actually noticing the empty space around an object, that which is not a thing. Can I see it with my eyes? So does space have any color at all? No, it doesn't. I don't think it has color. Yeah. Does it have any texture? No. Really good. And does it have... Um, is it making any sound? No. And I'm, I'm saying all that with my eyes closed, but if I open my eyes, mm -hmm. somehow I think I see space around the thermos. But you're yeah. not 100% convinced that you're seeing it with your eyes, otherwise you wouldn't have asked this question, right? You wouldn't have brought this forward. Something, some little uh, wisdom sneaking in there anyway. Like, is that actually so? This assumption that I've had, is that actually so? Right. Because I heard you say that you see, your senses see, um, when you zoom in, you, you zoom the, you're you using your senses. When you zoom out, you're not using the senses. Yeah. Zooming in and zooming out are different to the senses. So when I zoom in and pay attention to an object, I'm going to think about it. My attention goes like this, and, and I look at the object, and I start to think about it. Or I can zoom back out and just notice the space around the object, and my mind will stop or go quiet, quieter and then stop. That's different to what we're doing with our senses. Because if we, if we do it by comparison, if you take the thermos away, you still know there's empty space here. If we took all the objects out of that room that you're sitting in, everything, you'd still know that there's empty space there. And yet there's nothing tangible about it at all. No color, no shape, no size. Right. No location for it either, is there? No. You know, I think maybe too, because I'm taking this course on decluttering and the teacher is very big on making sure that you have space. Yeah. That the eye needs to see space and so that you don't have so many objects in the room. So maybe. And that's, that's it's, it's very normal. Um, and that's why I'm bringing this point forward, you know, when we're doing this kind of zooming out, because if we feel that, um, our senses are what we're using to perceive the intangibility of our real self, then we're going to fear the body going because we'll fear that we're, when our senses are gone, that we're going to lose out somehow. But there's a deeper kind of seeing, isn't there, that comes before the eyes, a seeing that can see intangibility. And the physical eyes see tangibility, but the awareness sees intangibility. Mm. So just to just to gently recognize, okay, this this is kind of interesting to me. I can question this. How am I seeing the space? This is a really good question for me. Or how am I hearing silence? It's not with my ears. My ears hear sound or words or noise. Uh, whichever of the senses you like to do that with, you can just sit with that question and it'll just become clearer. That's all I did is just, how, how am I recognized? I know it's here but it doesn't have any texture or quality or anything definable. Mm -hmm. And I just sat with that and I was like, how am I recognizing it then? And 
just that kind of soft intention to to find that out and to eliminate how you're not doing it. It's not a thought process. I don't have to think about if empty space is here. I know. It's before thought, isn't it? You can think about it afterwards, but when I ask you, is there any empty space in that room? You don't have to think. You can just give me an answer straight away. So it's not a mind process in that way. And it's not your physical eyes. <clears throat> so just to sit with this question, and what happens if you ask this question inside yourself, how am I recognizing empty space? Just asking that inside yourself and see what happens. You don't necessarily need to give me an answer. Just, I'm just curious about how I'm actually doing it. And just notice what happens to your body. And to your mind, maybe. Well, it kind of softens. Yeah. It, 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 it softens when I think I'm not using my eyes. The old way, it didn't really soften when I thought I was using my eyes. Because we think we know. So we're kind of jammed into a corner spiritually. We, we've gone down a cul-de-sac. I know how I'm doing this. So there's no, there's a kind of closeness in our energy and we've zoomed in around that thought. I know how I'm doing it. That's why this is coming up now because your consciousness wants to break out of this. So just to actually ask, well, how am I doing it? For me, there was just this opening, softening is a, a very good word. Something just subtly slowed down and opened up. And the longer I stayed with this question, the better I felt. And then at some point it just became clear from two minutes before it wasn't. And then somehow it was a very ordinary moment. It wasn't like fireworks and angels singing. It was just, I, I, I am that space. And it was just obvious. But because we believe we know how we're seeing it. We're closed to this realization. We can't let it in. So we're just opening a door with a question. Well, how am I doing it then? Hmm. And you leave yourself wide open then for a realization. E even that you don't care so much because you start to feel quite nice just being with this question. It's a bit more relaxing at first and then it becomes quite peaceful. Hmm. Can you get a sense of it? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you for bringing that up. <laughs> uh, Shankara? Hi. Hi, Helen. Can you hear me? I can, yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. You stated uh, in the last satsang, uh, kind of a quote, the ego starts to practice, the self finishes it. Yeah. And I have uh, read uh, a picture. Uh, you posted, uh, you wish we could see the world through your eyes mm -hmm. uh, or experience the world through your experience. So, and? Also, uh, you mentioned that, if I am correct, you had your final realization, in, uh, as I understood, with Adya Shanti, where you sit, sit in his presence. Is this correct? Yes. Yeah. So I'm here now, uh, sitting in your presence, mm -hmm. wanting, to see, <laughs> wanting to see the world through your eyes as I... <laughs> and. Uh, let the self finish it, what I have started for my ego. So let's, let's uh, and everyone can do this. Um, I'd like you to just forget what everything is, everything for a moment, as if you'd forgotten all the names and labels you could put on anything. Just for a moment, just to look at everything around you as if you'd never seen it before. 
looking at your own body. You don't even know what this is. And a thought appears. You've got no clue what that is. When an emotion arises, it's, it's a new experience. Never experienced this before. Everything is brand new. No idea what anything is. How does that feel when you do that? <laughs> so feeling free. <clears throat> freedom right, right. there. Ah, yeah. Freedom. Yeah. And and not even knowing what awakening is or illusion, especially forgetting those two. Yeah. And uh, this may seem over simplistic, but it is uh of course, uh, anything that we do that's ultra simple is going to be ultra effective. But the mind rejects simplicity for quite some time. Mm. So any time that you're suffering, it's because you think you know what something is. Now, mm -hmm. you will have picked up a label again for something. Mm. So a sensation arises and we say, oh, that's fear. I know what that is. And then we begin to think about the fear. And then the energy can't move through the body, it gets stuck. So if we can really deeply um, meet the world like we did when we were three or four years old with wonder and awe, then deep, deep abiding curiosity, there becomes this kind of real joy and passion for life and peace. And not only that, you begin to have an influence on everyone around you in quite a profound way. All right, how are you feeling now? You've still forgotten everything, right? Kind of. <laughs> if, if you remembered something, it's okay. Just uh, whatever it is you found yourself thinking about, mm. just asking then, can I forget about this too? Because the next thing mine's going to say is, how do I keep this? Mm. How do I make sure I keep this after we finish talking, right, or something? Mm. So can you forget about that as well? Because you, uh, the very urge to keep it will make it seem absent. Mm. How do I let the desire go of trying to keep it? Just being curious about the desire too? Yeah, forget what desire is and actually experience. It's a sensation in the body, right? Maybe a strong movement of something and just actually feel it and let it run through the course of your body, however it's going to move. Just really be with it. Can you feel it moving, changing as you really just let it? Got no idea what it wants to do or what you're supposed to do with it. Mm. Don't know what it is, don't know what you're supposed to do with it. Mm. don't know what you're not supposed to do with it either mm. just letting it happen yeah mm. like you've never seen desire before like wow what is this actually this is something new and when you um meet your experience like this everything is new mm. because it's the first time you've experienced this you know reality looking like this if we go to the names and the labels, we start to believe in time. I've, I've felt this before, and last time I did this and it didn't work, and I was suffering for ages. So yeah. that labeling is how we suffer, not the actual thing that we're experiencing. Yeah. So you can get, you can make it a habit just to be deeply curious about anything that pops up in your experience. And you will not be able to suffer from that. Even grief, physical pain, all of the things that we want to avoid. A deep curiosity. What is this actually? Like a yeah. child meeting it. If you brought a four-year-old child into satsang, they'd be just asking questions constantly. What is that? What's that? What's that? What's that? You know, like from a real innocent place. Yeah. Can you be like that inside? Yeah. I think it's my nature, kind of. 
It really is. Yeah. Just returning back to that, but consciously. So you don't seem to lose it again. And your mouth might say fear and, you know, uh, I'm a man and this is fear and that's desire and this is awakening and that's, but the words are kind of empty then. They don't have any meaning inside you. They're just things that you use for convenience. Oh. I, don't, I don't have a clue what you are at all. <laughs> you I don't have a clue what I am either or anyone. <laughs> Everyone thinks that awakened being's got it all figured out, you know? Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Weird. <laughs> It really is. Everyone looks like they really know something, right? They really got something. <laughs> what do we don't know? <laughs> Inside, there's just like, woo, you know, tumbleweed going past nothing. <laughs> <laughs> just being like this more and more, just because it feels good. No other reason, just like this, because it feels nice. Yeah. It's light. That's it's enlightenment of the labels, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Enlightened of all my burdens of knowing what everything is. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a timeless quality to it, isn't there? Can you feel it? Yes. It's yeah, eternal. Um, it's a label, but time is yeah. Yeah. we we'll just use that word loosely. Yeah. Yeah. It's not coming and going. It's, it's, okay. it's kind of absolute, isn't it? It's just here. Yeah, it's just here. No reason and full. Say that again. That it's, it has no reason. It's, uh, yeah. It's just here. And it's full kind of things there's no like oh it's so full it's so so full mm. Mm. just just really gently with me just being curious about that whatever that is like what is that mm. what is that mm. you don't even need an answer just like what is that and you can spend your whole life like that Mm -hmm. there'll be a period of life reminding you what you're sure of what you think you know so that you can forget those things mm -hmm. like the desire that came off mm -hmm. beautiful <laughs> good to talk to you as always <clears throat> um <clears throat> tatiana tatiana yeah hope i said that correctly hi helen uh hi. my question is so down to whatever earth from what you were discussing before for example your child, all good all good your child has something on the, on this on her skin and it's bothering her it's irritating you have no idea what is that are you going to go to look google like just desc describing it how you will be with that it's it's a real thing you have yeah. to react on that somehow and this is perfect a perfect uh question right after shankar's um what we just did because the very next thing I mind is say, well, that's all right when we're sitting in a class like this, but what, what, when something's happened to my child? So from a place of not knowing what anything is, yeah. then the body is free to move to do whatever is the best action in that moment. What that is, I don't know. So I'll be finding that out as my body does it. Huh. And so we, what it tends to be is something that's really, really helpful. That might be phoning the the uh, doctor and saying, this is what's happening, what should I do? Or it might be Googling it, or 
it might be saying, well, let's keep an eye on it and see what happens or, you know, and if we need to later, we'll go get it checked out. But there is no, <clears throat> I have no idea what my body's going to do with that. But whatever it does tends to end in success. What, what it really, um, whatever it's moved to do, it's the power of that real self moving it. And it can move efficiently and clearly without all this what should I do-ness going on inside. Because I know what this is. This is my child and this is something really wrong or, you know. And of course, I'm not going to forget who my children are from that not knowing. I can still, you know, we still have the appearance of a relationship, mother and child and all of that. And all that's still there. And But underneath, you know, um, you don't really know what anything is or why anything's happening. And then you see what unfolds from there. And it might be the very same action you would take um, as a separate being, but it, it will feel peaceful and quiet even while it's going on. Does that make sense? Yeah. Is it very different from what you experienced before your opening up, your awakening? Oh, yeah, yeah okay. before it would be, oh my God, what is happening? This is all my fault. I'm such a bad parent, you know, and um, I'd spend probably, I'd drive myself nuts waiting to see the doctor. By the time we got through doing that, I'd be exhausted. There'd be so much noise, you know, mentally exhausted. Um, and uh, it would just be, I wouldn't know what to do. I'd just be a complete mess. I mean, the self drives the body anyway, so you end up getting some medical advice if you need it, but there'd just be this torture thing going on inside my head. Yeah. You know, and um, going through that experience, that type of experience, but completely in this tunnel vision of uh, all the reasons I think I'm a bad parent and why that's happening, you know, replaying mm -hmm. all the greatest hits of, you know, not good enoughness. <laughs> All, all the reruns and yeah. um did just got drag getting dragged through that experience mm -hmm. despite my best resistance mm -hmm. so couldn't be couldn't be more pulls apart yeah thank you so much i i was thinking about it because it should be very very different but how practical it is it's like you do what you can, and then you just move through that, right? Yeah, yeah. And if, um, let's say, something that some diagnosis came for my child um, that was not what we wanted, uh, then there might be some negative emotion there inside me. Mm -hmm. There might be some thoughts about it. But there'd be nothing that could fight with that or say this is not what awakening looks like. It would just be, this is what awakening looks like right now. Mm -hmm. And the thoughts and the energy would, emotion would move through and then they'd be gone. They wouldn't be resi uh, resisted. Everything's just happening outside, you know, moving to get whatever advice we need inside, things moving. So there's no, no sense that anything is other than it should be right now in that. And this is what we need. We need um more contemporary examples of uh awakened beings uh to actually say this is this is what it's like in an everyday way mm -hmm. so thank i'm you glad so you, you asked this yeah thank you especially being a parent as well i mean that's the one sticky place for all parents with our thoughts you know i'm sure thank you okay uh don Hello. Hi. Okay. Um, so I, I have, um, today's my parents' 71st wedding anniversary, and wow. um, they're both still 71st. on this earth plane. Yes, they're still on this earth plane. Wow. Congratulations. That's, that's... She, she's a young 89. He's in his 90s. So they got wow. married when, they, when she was really young. <laughs> That's so, amazing. Yeah. Um, 
they got they eloped to South Carolina because North Carolina had more stringent rules for marriage. I think. I think. They're not. Anyhow, um, I've I've been sort of reflecting that I put myself into a relationship similar to my family of origin, and I'm trying to figure out, which is a bad sign anyway. But, <laughs> Like, I already know I'm on a downer. If I'm starting to figure, trying to figure something out, here we yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Helen said, oh, "Okay, there. We'll start there. Okay, <laughs> um, that's easy. It's just like shooting a layup." Um, but I'm, I'm like, I real, you know, I realize I've, I have some stuff in my lower back going on, and I think I heard you say that Louise Hay says that's fear of money not fear of lack of money but fear of money mm. and um and so, you know that calculus runs through my family of origin and my girlfriend and me and i've been really working with my back pain stuff lately a lot and i got this book that says back pain is 99% emotional <laughs> and and then Louise says it's 99 cents fear of money. So there, there's just, it's, it's, but I, I notice I get really tense and that's where it goes. Um, and the frustration in this relationship. Um, and, you know, certainly I've been manipulative and shared my share of it, but I was, I was starting to realize I sort of replicated that. And, and so, you know, I was going through that. My dad broke his back the other day and I got him the wrong back appointment. And, you know, today just seems kind of like a comedy of everything that I do is wrong. And, and I'm sitting here, you know, uh, but that's kind of, uh, I think it's funny. My mom always said, you'll be the death of me. You know, she used to say that when I was a kid, and I'm like, you're 89, and you've been married 71 years. You really can't put that on me. <laughs> Maybe you need to stop saying that now, because yeah. you're going to outlive us all. Yeah. yeah, That argument doesn't fly <laughs> anymore. <laughs> but, um, so, um, you know, I guess if you flip this parent, uh, you know, that, that's the kid's script, you know, that I'm guilty for taking, doing what I did to her. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, it just feels like I'm so, that everyone I've, that I've created all these reactive people and my therapist said, well, because you're used to this in your relationship with your mother and your parents, you're, you're sort of used to this with this woman. And, you know, I, I'm looking at it, I'm like is and then you know i went to the post office to mail something and i'm sitting here and this call i've been waiting for for you know a while to come in comes in and i'm you know trying to do two things and there's only one woman behind me and you know i it, it was a more complicated phone call than i thought so i probably stayed on the phone like four minutes while i was doing something else and and she said and she said um we're slowing down the process and you know i was still on the phone with the other guy and i you know put my hand over the phone and i said well i'm glad to be someone perfect today because i'm not and you know then but that was like an ego side remark but it's just been like it's it seems like everything is sort of in my face and my older sister checked out of this family when she was 35 so she got out you know, and went to wherever she went. Um, but it just feels like all the relationships are like front and center. And I'm, you know, I'm faithfully listening to you and, um, and, you know, doing this kind of work. But it feels like, wow, everything is just like exploding. Um, so the what, what's the explosion? What's what's going on today? Is it some kind of aggression or some kind of anger coming back at you, or what? What, what is it that's happening? This woman in the queue behind you was it some kind of hostility? Well, or? that was just sort of like 
that was the probably the least of it. Just like the other day when I was, my dad broke his back again for like the third time and um, doing something that I, you know, and you know, there's back pain in the family too. And, um, you know, I tried to schedule online and I kept writing into the program back and then they kept sending him to the hand specialist. And so I finally just gave up and, you know, let him go to the hand specialist. But I also made a backup appointment later that afternoon for a, a back doctor. And um, so he went and they wouldn't take him because he was. Everything just being what more difficult than, than it ought to just be. More difficult and more like, you know, it's their anniversary and, you know, what I had sort of planned to do. And then, um, have you, you know. Have my, you pointed yourself a manager of all of this that's going on somehow inside? Are you the one that's got well, to sort all of this out? Well, I think yesterday, you know, I went to an acupuncturist and I felt really relaxed after it. And I realized that um, I always, I usually feel I'm anticipating something horrific now when my girlfriend calls me that she's either going to be really, really, really happy or really, really, really miserable. And, you know, I just, you know, wrote her a letter and said, I can't go with the roller coaster anymore. This is just driving me. And then, you know, she threatened to go to somebody that we're working on a book with. And, you know, she, she, it seems to me she goes with the nuclear option. And then I realized with my mom, she goes with the nuclear option. And Explain to me what you mean by nuclear option. Well, like, instead of like doing something sort of tit for tat with my level of of uh, mistake it's escalated you know mm -hmm. that my inner child may be 10 years old and their inner child may be six years old so have the, you made a mistake have you made a mistake here well i think i've made some mistakes with this woman um and have you, have you really this this is like may seem irrelevant what I'm asking you, but it's really important. Have you made a mistake here? Let's just I slow down. Have... Let's, let's slow down and really just ask this question together. See what happens here. We know what your mind thinks about it and that's okay, but let's just investigate. Have you actually made a mistake? Any mistakes? I don't know. You know, you just want to be a loving presence. And, yeah. and that's do... why I'm pushing you right now, because, because we need to break through this together to, right now here, okay? Okay. Yeah. So let's stay with this question, okay? I know it'll bring some emotion up, and you're doing really, really well here, but that you've been amazing. Everyone here is loving you and supporting you. Okay, I'm sure you speak for everyone because we all have this horrible idea that we hold on to that I've I've done something wrong. I've made a mistake. So let's just stay with this question. Have I actually made a mistake? You don't even need to answer me. I just want you to hold this question inside. I really would like to see. I want to see this clearer than I want to hold on to this idea. I'm ready to be free of this. And I know you are. Have I actually made a mistake? Let's take your time. You're doing really well. This belief here is the cause of so much mischief in our lives. Just keeping this question as close as you can to your heart, whatever that means right now for you. Have I actually made a mistake? Well, my therapist and my friends told me I did. 
well, do you want to continue to feel like that or do you want to find the truth? Maybe this is your test. Maybe your, this is your moment where you get to either find out for yourself or listen to external voices that mirror what your mind is telling you. Let's find out for ourselves, shall we? Mm -hmm. Have I actually made a mistake? Really, really would like to see this. With as much curiosity as you can bring to bear at the moment, which might not be a lot, but if you're feeling emotional, so just, I'm just open to see. How are you feeling? A little lighter. So stay with it for a minute or two. Have I actually made a mistake? Maybe letting her talk to me that way. Let's not stop there. That, that's an answer, but let's not let's not stop there. We want we want an answer that feels really fulfilling. We're looking for deeper answers. We'd like some answers from the heart. How about that? What does your heart say about this question? Have I really made a mistake? Not your mind, I'm asking your heart. No. That was very clear, wasn't it? Mm hmm So you need to live here, right? You need your heart's opinion about you to be more important than anybody else's or anything else. Feel a bit more relaxed now, a bit lighter. Mm -hmm. I want you to stay with this question. I'm going to prescribe this question, okay? And you take it as many times a day as you need. Make sure you finish the course until this feeling has gone completely. <laughs> okay. Okay. You did really, really well there. I pushed you a little bit. So well, I'm not apologizing for that, actually, but one of the easiest process. But the rewards are oh so amazing. But just stay with that question now, okay? Okay. For at least two or three days, at least. You want to shift this uh, thought permanently and then it's it's gone. Your ability to believe it, at least. Okay. Okay. Well done. Thank you. Wow. Uh, last but not least, Sylvia. Hi, Helen. Hi. This is such a powerful question. And it's, I I mean, I was listening to Dawn and it's like, uh, when I when you said this question, it's just a tears came in my eyes because I just see so much love toward everybody and toward myself because there is such a clarity that is just, I don't want to do the homework for the Dawn. So I will not continue <laughs> finish the sentence, but, so that was very, very powerful, I love it. But what I would like to ask you is about, um, I also try to do this one month uh, a statement that every day I will do 20 minutes meditation. Yeah. Um, there are a few things that are coming up, so I just would like to check with you. 
um, for some reason, I come uh, much faster to the background when I am in a nature or when I am when there are people or movement or something rather than when I am in my bedroom where it's just white wall. Yeah. Is it it's just the way how it is, right? Yeah, because mine's like, what are you doing sitting around meditating? You sure you've got <laughs> stuff to do, right? You know, this is pointless, <laughs> it's not getting you anywhere, you know. But if you're out and about or in nature, then your mind's not going to be put. And it might not be conscious of those thoughts, but there's kind of a, oh, you're sitting here again in your bedroom meditating, you know, like this isn't going to get you anywhere, you know, that kind of resistance that's sometimes not so subtle. And sometimes it's even easier to meditate when there's a lot going on around you Mm -hmm. because it's almost easy to just not pick out any particular thing that's going on you just kind of stepped back zoomed out watching in a way like in an airport where there's just people coming and going constantly and noise you know a lot of stimuli it's just like whoa it's like this symphony of people just moving around and you know and I think that there is higher kind of like higher contrast between this movement and non-movement in a way yeah because there's so much movement yes the contrast is very obvious isn't it yes that's what I mean yes absolutely it's much easier in a way there was one time I was in a really busy airport and I can't remember where it was and uh, there was so much noise and I was just feeling like super steam overstimulated and I went into the uh, bathroom restroom whatever you call it just stood there and it was just quiet and it, and it hit me what you're saying, right? With all of this activity, then sometimes finding that silence and that stillness in the background is, is a lot easier. Mm-hmm. Well, for me, the way that how does it work? Yeah. yeah. And the second observation that I have noticed is also, it's kind of like a helping me, like helping point is um, when there is some point, um, then I can much easy see that this body and the certain point that when I'm, for example, now computer or whatever, that they are uh, equal in a way in the background. Yeah. So like, again, I look this comparison. Yeah. Because um, normally what we do, we'd say this, this body's way more important. I can replace the computer but this body's like really important when that's gone. We, we give certain objects a specialness. And mm-hmm. of course, one of those we do it with is our own body <clears throat> and our own thoughts. And there's a, as you just relax into being aware of the background of everything, as you said, all of the objects are just equal. Yes. They're, they're just the same. They're just objects. There's not, there's, Inner objects of thoughts that are more subtle as outer objects, like your body, but um, they don't have any uh, difference or special value because you're not thinking about them. It's the thinking about them that gives them that specialness, like we did with Shankara. Just forget what it is. If you forget what this is, then... You don't have, uh, you don't need to treat it any different. You value it, you look after it. It's, you know, like all objects, they're all sacred. But -hmm. there's not any ones that are, the ones that we treat specially or as special. You know, my spouse, my children, my my own body, my thoughts, my finances, my money, Mm -hmm. uh, my boss, you know, whatever (laughs) objects trouble us, then there'll be a lot of thoughts about those ones in particular. But yes. noticing yeah. you can just view them differently, they're, they're all the same. That's where the peace is, isn't it? Well, the, the, there is a very strong uh, seeing uh, the, 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 the prior is practically the background. Say that again for me. That uh, again, in this moment, like for example, today was nice weather. I went for the walk, I sat on the bench. I was again, people walking on the, in the park, and there uh, the aims went on my hand and it bite me. And even in this moment, I was in this meditation, there was like, you know, discomfort of your skin 
uh, sounds outside, tree outside, a movement. There was there, everything was at the like at the same level of of intensity, importance, or I don't know how which words yeah. I could use it. Yeah. The only thing that was a prior was the background. Yes. And do you notice that you couldn't all of those things? So the the sensation on your skin, uh, the discomfort, the sound of the um people in the background the the wind blowing through the trees you can't pick out from that place you can't pick out any one of those you're just kind of taking it all in at the same time the whole experience as one experience yes yeah yes yes but what what i and and it's maybe even in my mind because i can understand this when i do my deduction i can understand (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that, uh, that's a good word actually we, yeah we'll go with that that uh, because at the essence is the same but if this body, body this sensation of, of the bite uh, uh, sounds whatever visual what I see the wind uh, is the same it has to and because it is limited it has to have in these assets something what is unlimited, which is a background. So logically I can see it, but somehow maybe my mind, like what I have described up till now, it's so obvious, but I don't see obvious that like it's like forming from one. So is it a trick I can, or you know, like now I'm doing this exercise. Is there something else I can add it to my meditation? So all of those, the ant biting you, your hand, the sounds, the people, all of it. Could it be there without the background? I don't think so. It well, no, I don't think, I, no, no. You because, said that you said I, the background was prior. So it must be there first. I think you used that, that was that the word you used prior? Yes, be, uh, prior, I use these words because I, for example, I did exercises, try not to have a background and it's not possible. Yeah. So whatever happens. You can, the objects could all disappear. The yes. background would still be here. Yes. But without this space here, could everything be in it? No. 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 So are they really different then? Are they really background and foreground or background and what's appearing in it? If one, if all of these objects depend upon the background for their existence and they're gone without it. No, it, it, it must be made it from that. And that's what I got at that moment that, that Shankara was talking about. Ajishanti said, can the thought be there without the awareness? And before I'd said, no, it can't. But something just hit me. Oh, my God. The thought and the awareness are the same thing. They are one. One thing showing up two different ways. Mm-hmm. Where does the ant come from? <laughs> Yes. Like really, where does it come from, that ant? What's it made out of? It was specifically sent by God to bite me so I can have this moment of like aha. No, no, no. Let, let's not think <laughs> about it. Let's let's just ask this question. <clears throat> this this ant has been sent, yeah, you're right, maybe to <clears throat> um to uh help you uh wake up to the truth. So where did it come from? I don't mean where did it fly in from or crawl from. I mean, like, yeah. what's it made of? <laughs> it, it was made of the same thing as this body is made. Or, or And what's or... that? What's it made of? We're um, <clears throat> almost out of time, so I, I would like you to take that in. Like okay. when, when you're sat there in the park and you're watching all this stuff, all the people in the airport, like 
What is it all made out of? Okay. And you might never get an answer to that question, but something inside will change profoundly. No, I mean, an answer here. Mm -hmm. But your experience will be the answer. You get a taste of it right now, but the longer you stay with it, the better it gets. Yeah, I think the love is coming out, so it's 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 a good sign. That's the answer, right? That's the answer. Yes. Yeah. Oh my God, I thought this was an ant. <laughs> it's actually God. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. What an action-packed hour. Um, I will hand it back over to you, Sina. Thank you, thank you, everyone. Wow, that was amazing. So enjoyed this. Thank you.